Environmental conservation and protection has been neglected like no other sector in this year's presidential manifestos. A situation environmentally is fine disappointing considering the wanton abuse of natural resources. Conservationists say the biggest contributor to environmental degradation is the rapidly growing population that depends directly on natural resources for their sustenance and livelihood. This dependency, experts argue, could see Uganda's natural resources depleted in just 10 years' time. It's estimated that some 6 million tons of firewood is consumed annually, with an economic value of the soil nutrient loss estimated at 625 US dollars. The country's wetlands that occupy about 29,000 square kilometers are dwindling at an alarming rate. What this means is that the billions of shillings earned from tourist attractions could be lost. Water catchment areas for most rivers and lakes would be no more, resulting into irregular climatic changes. In addition, employment opportunities from the sector for the largely youthful Ugandan population would be crippled. If you are an economy like Uganda, where the majority of the population are dependent on agriculture, the, the economy is dependent so much on extractives, and then you are not investing in those uh, sectors, then, uh, then you really have a problem explaining the, the nature of your, of your economic policy. Uganda already has in place laws and regulations to protect natural resources. The problem, however, is that many people choose not to enforce the law. Everybody spends more time and money either trying to, to break or circumvent the law. In fact, it is much cheaper to break the law than to comply. Now that situation goes to the environment sector. That's why people, when people are given an opportunity to go and destroy a forest, they rejoice. So I think the people need to know that we need to balance as a country, we need to balance between environmental protection and economic development providing jobs. If Meta comes up and says, look, the, the part of my near my uh, sugar plantation has been degraded beyond repair because the experts there say that Mabira, the part which is degraded need 30 years in order to regrow. Those are experts. Can't we allow perhaps Meta to grow sugar cane so that there are people who are getting jobs in 26 months, the sugar cane is ready for cutting and harvesting into, into sugar. Analysts opine that the environment and natural resource sector plays a key role in development, a role most politicians have not yet appreciated. They argue that presidential candidates are responding only to the immediate demands of the people while neglecting a sector pivotal to other sectors. Now, bringing issues of environment on the forefront of the political agenda is something that requires leadership because the citizens who are suffering from food insecurity who are facing disasters who are suffering who are facing a wood fuel shortage they, they will not directly connect environment and natural resources to their problems for them it is food insecurity for them we don't have wood fuel there are provisions about land conservation we have provisions about recovery of the ecosystem which has been degraded. So the environment features very large in our manifesto. The NRM government receives kudos from establishing legal and institutional reforms, but is also guilty of breaking all the rules brought about by the reforms. We need to know that government is free to, and anybody for that matter, is free to bring a proposal. The government proposal about Mavira was merely a proposal. The president never gave away Mavira. Unfortunately, the government ministers and the detractors did not explain this well to the people. Now, part of our challenge as a country, I think, is where we've had the, the government, the state, and the ruling party fused. Uh, so there is nobody who holds each other accountable because it is just one institution. And I, and I think... Uh, partly because of that, the environment and natural resources sector are suffering. Over the last two decades, the environment and natural resource sector has been underfunded. 
In the 2010-2011 financial year, Uganda is spending 75% of its budget on health, roads, defense and security, public administration and management, while the remaining 25% goes to land and environment, agriculture, trade, tourism and industry. Now, whether presidential candidates appreciate the importance of maintaining the environment or not, it's crucial to note that this sector contributes to over 70% of the country's revenue. As the vote canvassing continues, it's imperative that political parties demonstrate to Ugandans that they have a comprehensive plan for the environment. Since the environment dictates the results of so many sectors, protecting it and keeping it sustainable constitutes a huge part of creating a robust and sustainable economy that will offer opportunities to the populace. Isabel Nakiria, NTV.